the reciprocating piston compressor is the patriarch of the compressor family. In the process industry, the reciprocating compressor is probably the oldest of the compressors with wide applications ranging from consumer to industrial usage. This compressor is manufactured in a broad range of configurations and its pressure range is the broadest in the compressor family, extending from vacuum to more than 40,000 psi. The reciprocating compressor declined in popularity from the late 1950s through the mid-1970s. Compared to the centrifugal compressor, its higher maintenance cost and lower capacity contributed to this decline. However, recent rises in energy costs and the advent of new specialty process plants have given the more flexible, higher efficiency reciprocating compressor a more prominent role in new plant design, even though it has lower capacity. Now, at this level, what I want you to keep in mind is that the reciprocating compressor is a positive displacement intermittent flow machine that operates at a fixed volume in its basic configuration. One method of varying volumes is by speed modulation. Another more common method is the use of clearance pockets with or without valve unloading. With clearance pockets, the cylinder performance is modified. With valve unloading, one or more inlet valves are physically open. Capacity may be regulated in a single or double acting cylinder with single or multiple cylinder configuration. A unique feature of the reciprocating compressor is the possibility of multiple services on one compressor frame. On a multi-stage frame, each cylinder can be used for a separate gas service. For example, one cylinder may be dedicated to propane refrigeration, while the balance of the cylinders may be devoted to product gas. Now, at this stage, don't panic if some or all of the concepts highlighted here are not clear for you. We will break them down into easily digestible concepts further ahead, and you have our promise that by the end of this course, you will have advanced knowledge on reciprocating compressors. Ok, take a look at the following 3D animation. It shows how reciprocating compressors work. The example that you will see here is a two-cylinder double-acting compressor. The basic component of this compressor are highlighted in this video. Now, don't worry if at this level, the function and construction details of each of these components are not clear for you. We will discuss all of this in exquisite details further ahead in the course. A prime mover, which is not seen in this video, rotates the crankshaft. The crankshaft converts the rotary motion of the prime mover into reciprocating motion of the pistons. Here, the compression cycle of the reciprocating compressor consists of two strokes of the piston, the suction stroke and the compression stroke. 
The suction stroke begins when the piston moves away from the inlet port of the cylinder. The gas in the space between the piston and the inlet port expands rapidly until the pressure decreases below the pressure on the opposite side of the suction valve. The pressure difference across the suction valve causes the suction valve to open and admit gas into the cylinder. The gas flows into the cylinder until the piston reaches the end of its stroke. The compression stroke starts when the piston starts its return movement. When the pressure in the cylinder increases above the pressure on the opposite side of the suction valve, the suction valve closes to trap the gas inside the cylinder. As the piston continues to move toward the end of the cylinder, the volume of the cylinder decreases and the pressure of the gas increases. When the pressure inside the cylinder reaches the desired pressure of the stage, the discharge valve opens and discharges the contents of the cylinder to the process. A closer look at the suction stroke and the compression stroke of the compressor will be provided in the next video. Ok, now as discussed in the previous video, the compression cycle of a reciprocating compressor consists of two strokes of the piston, the suction stroke and the compression stroke. For the following discussion, we will use an ideal pressure volume indicator diagram followed by a series of cylinder illustrations depicting piston movement and valve position. So here you have the piston with the compressor cylinder. Here you have the suction valve and here the discharge valve. The intake pressure or suction pressure is P1 and the discharge pressure is P2. The figure will show in diagram form, as you can see here, one complete crankshaft revolution and will encompass a complete compression cycle. The diagram that you can see here takes the form cylinder gas pressure as a function of gas volume. To begin the cycle, the piston is located at the lower end of the stroke, also known as the bottom dead center. The piston as depicted here is at path 0.1 on the indicator diagram. At this point, the cylinder has filled with gas at intake pressure P1. Note here that the valves are both closed. The piston then starts to move to the left. This is the compression portion of the cycle and is illustrated here by path 1, 2. When the piston reaches point 2 on the indicator diagram, the discharge valve starts to open. At this moment, the discharge portion of the cycle starts. This is shown on the indicator diagram as path 2, 3. Notice that during this period, the discharge valve is open, while the suction valve is closed. The gas is discharged at the discharge line pressure P2. When the piston reaches point 3, it has traveled to the upper end of its stroke, also known as the top dead center. Physically at this point, there is a space between the piston face and the head as depicted here. This space results in a trapped volume of gas, illustrated in this example in red. And this is called the clearance volume. Next in the cycle, the piston reverses direction and starts the expansion portion of the cycle, as depicted here. Path 3-4 shows this portion of the cycle. Here the gas 
trapped in the clearance volume is re-expanded to the intake pressure P1. Notice here that the discharge valve has closed and the suction valve is still closed. At point 4, the expansion is complete and the intake valve starts to open as depicted here. The intake portion or suction stroke begins. This is illustrated by path 4-1 on the indicator diagram. The cylinder fills with gas at intake line pressure P1. When the piston reaches point 1, the cycle is complete and starts to repeat as long as the reciprocating compressor is operating.